Hello everyone, my name is Camilla and I have chosen to do the research project this semester. Um, as I looked through the list of artists at the beginning of the semester, there were a few that caught my attention, but only one whose work really made me want to know more about it, and that is Doho Sup. This is a Korean artist who actually comes from a family of artists. And he has relocated to the United States to study and work. He is a sculptor and has many installations around the world with his big scale pieces of art. His motivation to create art is the idea of memories and feelings and how we can remember that um, and spaces from his lifetime are probably the most important source of inspiration for a lot of his artwork um, since each of those spaces has offered him something new and valuable. One of his most popular art pieces is this one, um, 348 West 22nd Street. Um, it is named after the location of his studio apartment in New York City. He says this is the only place where he ever lived in New York as a young artist and it really meant a lot to him um, and after asking for permission from his landlord Dohoso brought a team back to his apartment to help him recreate um, this amazing piece it is a life-size replica of the apartment and it has traveled around the world it's really funny because he can pack it up and just take it to a whole different country and have his home with him. Um, but yeah, it's it's made from many different colors and fabrics and they create an amazing illusion. You'll see that also in the next slide. Um, on the left, you can see how big and massive this, this piece, this installation is. Um, and then on the right, you can see a picture of the real place where, where he lived. Part of this um, idea um, of, you know, creating art that has to do with his background and personal life comes from his own uh, story as an immigrant. Um, he left home to pursue his dreams and that feeling of home wasn't with him anymore. And so in order to transport some of the memories that he had made in specific places, he has recreated them in different spots of the world in the U.S. Um, and this really gives him a sense of belonging. And I think it, it's really important for his audience as well to, to feel the same and to kind of have that relationship with the artist when they see his art. Um, and so this picture is actually the inside of the next slide, which is um, part of the Fallen Star series. Um, this is one of the houses um, that he placed at the top of a building in San Diego, California. And I'm sure that is really unusual for all of us to see a house that's almost falling off a building. But it has created an amazing impact on the people who have visited this place and it's just so, so cool. This is also a recreation of one of his childhood homes. Um, and I wanted to show you um, all the variety in his media, the different textures and colors that he uses on his different sculptures. This is actually another one of my favorites. It is called Cause and Effect, and it was created by stacking little human shapes on top of each other. The color variation is best appreciated as it goes up and increases its size, uh, but it creates a beautiful ombre effect and the texture changes as you get closer and see the tiny people stacked. I think it's a really, really amazing piece. Um, here we see another piece of Dohoso's art. He created this metal jacket out of the military dog tags that he had collected. Um, when he was in school, he made the original piece for one of his classes. Um, and throughout the years, the jacket has gotten longer and longer. And he had a dream about this metal jacket, actually. And that's how he got a lot of the inspiration to create it. Um, and so once he woke up, he put himself to work. Um, his experience in the Korean military was also a big source of inspiration for him. 
and I think this is an amazing piece again he's such an amazing artist going back to his passion for spaces he um used crayons and paper to cover this whole apartment and created this texture and optical illusion where the appliances are and walls seem to be fake like they just look so different from reality um he also brought in some help for this but it's so incredible to watch him paint the stuff inside the space with crayons um so this is his rubbing technique it's one of his signature um techniques so um and here is um another piece um the last one that i wanted to share um this is also made out of tiny humans these are children's toys and they have um a human shape um, we can see the difference in scale in the picture on the right. Uh, he plays them all in squares, which he later put together to create a bigger square um, that was uh, created with this thick glasses, these cubes, basically. Um, and it was a whole floor supported by small humans. So it's a very, very interesting idea that I, I really like. And yeah, I have learned so much as I studied this artist and his artwork and have gotten a lot of inspiration from him. You'll be able to see all of my work cited at the bottom of each slide. But that's all for me. Thanks.